Welcome to Money Hangout once again. This is our weekly interaction in which we share ideas, thoughts, and try and help you invest better. Uh, <clears throat> this is brought to you by Bidla Sun Life Mutual Fund and Value Research. Today we are going to talk about investing for your child's future. Uh, it is such a sensitive subject. We are emotionally uh, so <clears throat> it's so high on our priority. Uh, it strikes an emotional chord with all of us. Uh, understandably so the cost of education the very example you know the, when I recall the cost of my graduation what my parents paid for my graduation uh, things have changed dramatically in those days it was all government funded uh, you know colleges uh, today things are different so the cost of education definitely has gone up dramatically primarily because uh, and it has nothing to do with the inflation uh, this the inflation in cost of education is very different. It's inflation and privatization all combined. Uh, <clears throat> plus, you know, of course, one has the purchasing power to one has the spending ability as well. Uh, but <clears throat> we will talk about how to address this issue, how to address this goal, how the best way to approach this, uh, because most investors are initiated or the whole idea gets triggered by an emotional appeal by a product, uh, particularly an insurance policy, which says that it's a child's plan, and parents should take care of their, you know, prepare for their child's education, or you know, child invest for their children, or for their child's future, and uh, <clears throat> it is low on facts, very high on emotion, that strikes a chord, and uh, that's that actually contributes to at least fo that forces you to think. Even the government did that, you know. Sukanya Samriddhi Yojana. It has a social goal. It provides a guaranteed return. Uh, it is a great, uh, uh, you know, it, it might be a great thing for people who, are, who otherwise have no access to financial product. You can go to your nearest post office and start investing for your girl child. It gets you the tax break. It, you know, the, the money, the return is guaranteed. It is little more than, it's, it's about as much as the public provident fund. Safety, I think, is the cornerstone here. Uh, but that may not be the finest of plan because investing for 18 years, investing for a young child and doing a long term fixed income investment, uh, that is not financially prudent. It is leaving, uh, it's, it's missing on a huge opportunity. So how you should approach this? I think <clears throat> I'll just set the principles for you. One is that uh, approach this goal in no other way but in the prudent way. Uh, it is just as important as your retirement, uh, saving for your retirement or for any other goal. You should have only two, three things in mind. One is that uh, the money should be appropriately invested depending on the time frame. And this time frame can change for different, you know, depending on the age of your child. If your child is going to get into the college four years from now and you estimate that 40, 50 lakh rupees will be needed then, then this is a short term investment which you have to make. You don't have the time to accumulate and plan. If you are planning to invest for your newborn child, you have all the time and you should think very differently. You need to plan a very different, uh, you should you need to take a very different course for investing for this child. If your child is five years <clears throat> old and you still have 10, 12 years uh, before his graduation, you need to plan differently. So it all depends. You cannot have a <clears throat> hard and fast rule or just any picking any child plan will not help you in fact picking any child fund is undesirable because most of the year it's important to understand that uh, buying an insurance policy which is being referred as a child plan may not be the wisest thing to do because uh, uh, of course before you get on to this i'm assuming that you have two three things in place which is the basic foundation for any investor you should have an emergency fund the money should be lying in your bank account or in a liquid fund so that you can access it, access it anytime. And uh, it should be conveniently uh, <clears throat> accessible. So we have talked about it in the past. And so th this is the step one. Second step is having your health insurance because if you don't have that, then all your investment plan is derailed uh, because a small hospitalization or you know some, uh, bad health can actually completely uh, 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 upset your investment plan or savings plan. 
then comes term insurance if you have financial dependence you must have life insurance and the life insurance should be looked upon at the cost once you have these three things then you are well taken care of and this life insurance part is very important if you have dependent child because factor in that cost uh, if you have a if you don't have a child and you just have to take care of your spouse uh, and she's the only financial dependence or your parents you need to think differently the moment you add a child in your family then you need to really bump up your <clears throat> term insurance or your insurance estimation it and it will cost you very small sum to begin with and over a period of time you can stop doing that once you have accumulated the savings but till you don't have you have to really financially secure that incur that cost so once you have done this i think things are well in well in place you should approach insurance primarily with that point of view budget for everything that uh, you know your financial dependents need and having a term insurance which will take care of that just in case you are not around once that is there then you don't need that insurance plan you need to really look at insurance and in, in investment separately uh, depending on the age of the child depending on the time frame you should choose the appropriate investment i would say that you know any period of 10 years and more you should safely be investing fully into equity be regular with it all the returns will be tax free and uh, anywhere between 5 to 10 years be with a balanced fund maybe if you you know if you are investing for a newborn child be in a equity fund for the first 10 years remaining 5 years move that money gradually in a year a span of 1 to 1 and a half year into a balanced fund so that you are able to get into relatively less volatile thing and you get as you get closer to the goal then you start moving all the money into fixed income gradually so if the child is you know uh, if you are in the 12th year and you need 4 5 years from now all the money for the graduation then in the last 4 year move a quarter of your money into fixed income so that you are completely assured of the money uh, that that you will have the money when you need it and likewise once you do it gradually you will not be missing the opportunity you will also be able to de-risk yourself from depending on the market for a very crucial goal and a non negotiable goal and once you have done that here is here is the finest child plan that you can have it can be built with great simplicity you will have complete control it will have full tax efficiency it will have complete tax efficiency because all these investments held for over one year will be completely tax free and uh, maybe uh, you will have more you will have yeah, you just might get lucky with the next 10 15 years 20 years equity markets always throw surprises so take charge get control uh, and uh, plan things and it's not a very complicated plan important thing is you should have the discipline inclination and uh, uh, don't get distracted from this stay on course irrespective of whatever be the state of market if you are on to this plan i think you can well afford the finest education possible for your child uh, and don't wait for the great time to uh, to to get started uh, i'll just cite you an example you know i was just doing some basic calculation that uh, for a newborn child 17 years ago if somebody would have invested in birla sun life advantage fund the, among the oldest fund even a 10000 rupees per annum annual investment invested at the child's birth as well as on every birthday i am not talking of a monthly sip or anything 10000 rupees invested for the last 17 years which means 170000 rupees invested and that will be close to 9 lakh rupees today and uh, so 9 lakh rupee actually takes care of uh, you know uh, there is a possibility that you can have your grad one can have get, get a mba in 9 lakh or if not an mba in 9 lakh then you will have reasonable money to actually supplement this uh, assuming that this cost is 16 lakh rupees it is better to or 15 lakh rupees then it's better to have your the 9 lakh and actually look for that remaining 6 lakh rupees then i have nothing so uh, what i am referring to with this example is that even a small amount invested regularly for such a long term goal will leave you, uh, you you have the potential to accumulate into something very sizable you have the power of compounding and the power of equity uh, coupled together uh, to to uh, to make it a very strong you know compelling proposition